Praise the Lord. We thank the Lord for working on our hearts, working on our lives in the love laboratory. In the love laboratory. Paul addressing the church at Corinth, having properly diagnosed the church, Paul realized that in as much as they were spiritual, even though they were very deep when it comes to charismatism, they were very charismatic, highly charismatic, yet they were suffering from love deficiency that was not making them efficient in their work with God. They were love deficient, so they were inefficient, yet they were charismatic, they were gifted, they operated in the gift, they were dynamic, they loved spiritual things, but they were not spiritual, because love is the real result of maturity. Love is actually the expression of real maturity. So today, we'll be looking at part three of love first love test love test we have established that everything we do in order for us to have a proper certification whatever we do we must be subjected through a test must be subjected through a critical examination investigation and proper evaluation and that is what testing is all about we've seen quite a number of things in the various verses from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 to 8, we ended the last time around in verse 5b. In verse 5b. So number 8 today, we are starting with number 8. LT number 8. The LT here is the love test. Love test 8. LT 8. So we are looking at verse 5c of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Love controls anger love controls anger the bible says that love is not easily provoked love is not easily provoked the word is easily the adjective is easily the key word is easily there will be def a definite or definite will be provocation but love is not easily provoked in other words love is not easily touchy there are people, any and every small thing they are touching. Any and every small thing they are touching. But love is not like that. When you become easily touchy or touchable or whatever expression I can use, then it means that you need to reconsider the issue of your love. It means we need, we need spiritual love tonic. Love controls anger. If you love people, You'll be able to hold back your anger against them. It is not every little and small thing you become angry with people. It is not any and everything you become angry, upset about things. We need to hold back. That's what love does. The people you love, you are able to defer your anger, defer your, your provocation, defer. Love defers anger. Love defer a response to provocation. Love holds by anger. In Psalm 106, verses 32 and 33, something happened to the most meekest man on the face of the earth. It happened in the book of Exodus, in the journey of the people. And because of that, this meekest man, harmless man, a man who deferred and has deferred his anger for all these years of Israel's journey got to a point in, in his life. He couldn't bear with the people anymore. His love for the people ran out. His love for the people began to depreciate. His love for the people began, began to run out of stock. And he didn't check it. He didn't deal with it. And I'm talking about the man Moses. So the Bible says in Psalm 106, Verse 32 and 33. Now when they got to the waters of Meribah, they angered his spirit. They provoked his spirit. And instead of dealing with that provocation, instead of dealing with that anger by the spirit of love, the Bible said that he spoke rashly with his mouth. 
he spoke rashly with his mouth against the Lord. Instead of doing what God asked him to do, he was not able to sanctify the law before the people. See, the Bible says that the anger of the Lord broke against Moses. And the Lord said to him, With your eyes you will behold Canaan, but with your feet you will not be able to enter into the place. A provocation. A provocation. Anger responds to a provocation. You may be justified responding. But the Bible says that even if we become angry, we should sin not. But Moses in his anger sinned against God by speaking rashly to God. But the people provoked him. Psalm 106, verse 32 to 33. Number 9. Number 9. Lap test 9. Lap test 9. We can find this in verses 5D of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5D. Love does not count evil. Love does not count evil. There are those who are keeping ledgers, books, accounting books. There are people who are keeping diaries. Either paper diary or brain diary or subconscious diary. Any little thing anybody has done to you, I've recorded it somewhere. Especially the evil ones. I pray that God will give us grace. Not to be counting the evil ones, but rather be counting the good ones and the good things people do. Love does not count evil. Love rather focuses on the sunny side and the good side of life. Love focuses on the sunny side or the good side of life. Love does not count evil. Some of us have been counting evil. In fact, we wait to count evil. If I will look forward to count evil, if I will look forward with an expectation to see people do evil against us, and then we count it, we add it into the evil ledger account. In love accounting, in love accounting, there is no suspense account. There is no suspense, suspense account or suspense record or suspense book. In love accounting, we don't count evil. When we are counting and we see evil, we jump the counting to the good one and we count the good one. That is what love accounting principle is. So if you want to practice love accounting principle, you will only count the good, but you never count the evil. Love does not jump into evil. Love does not take stock of evil. Love does not take inventory of evil. Love does not make esti estimates of evil. Love does not do that. If you count evil, if you jump into evil, if you take stock or inventory of evil, it's a sign that you need love tonic to boost your love levels because your love levels are decreasing. Number 10. Love test 10. Love test 10. Verses 6a of 1 Corinthians 13. Verses 6a of 1 Corinthians 13. In Proverbs chapter 10, verse 23, Proverbs 26, verse 19, we can see a cross-referencing. Love does not celebrate sin. Love does not celebrate sin. Love does not jubilate sin. Love does not revel in sin. Love does not celebrate sin. Love does not celebrate sin. The Bible says that love does not rejoice in iniquity. In other words, love does not celebrate injustice. So if you are a Christian and the love of God is in your heart, when you see injustice, whether in the nation, in your family, around you, among your peers, in the office, everywhere, injustice is something that we must never tolerate and celebrate. It doesn't matter who is perpetuating it. Love does not celebrate moral wrongfulness. That's what it means. The word iniquity is moral wrongfulness of character, of life, and of act. Moral wrongfulness. Love does not celebrate it. There are people who are justifying themselves. The reason why they are doing the wrong they do, because their wives are not loving them, they are now chasing side chicks. And they are having slave queens. Because their husbands are not satisfying them, they are sugar boys around. 
who are serving them and servicing them. You cannot justify it. You cannot celebrate that iniquity. Love does not celebrate iniquity. Love does not celebrate iniquity. Number 11. Love test 11. This is 6B of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Love celebrates the truth. Love celebrates the truth. Love rejoices in the truth. If you have love, the love of God, agape, in your heart, you will always celebrate the truth, rejoice in the truth. What is truth? In the Greek, the word is aletheia. Greek is the objective reality that lies at the base of appearance. Truth is the objective reality that lies at the base of appearance. In other words, if you love or walk in love, you don't jump to a quick conclusion of what you see. You must go beyond what you see or what appears to be. Because appearance can be deceptive. Appearance can be wrong. Appearance may not be the same thing that you see. So love goes beyond appearance and rejoices in the base that lies under appearance. Love celebrates the truth. In 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 16 to 28, 1 Kings chapter 3, 16 to 28. There were two women who came to Solomon. Two women. One had swapped a dead child for a living child. And she was living in iniquity and not in the truth. And they came and Solomon with the wisdom of God had to celebrate the truth. The other woman was ready to kill a living baby so that she becomes like that woman. So that they will all become childless at the same time. But it took someone who celebrates the truth, believing the truth, in order to give a righteous judgment. Let's celebrate the truth. Let's celebrate the truth. And then finally, for part three, finally for part three, number 12, LT12, love test number 12. We we'll look at verses 7a of First Corinthians 13. The Bible says that love covers all. Paul says love bears all. The word bear in the Greek means to cover. In Proverbs 10, 12 and Proverbs 17, verse 9. Proverbs 10, 12, 17, verse 9. The Bible made it clear that love covereth a multitude of sin. Love does not condone sin, but love covereth sin. What love does? Love saves you from disgrace in public, but deal with your iniquity in private. Let me repeat that. Love saves your disgrace, your shame in public, but love brings you in private to deal with your iniquity. That's what God does for his people, his children. He will save us in public, but deal with our iniquity in private. He's the one who sees in private and rewards in public. So we need to understand that. That when we love, we must learn to cover, but we must not condone. There are people who do not understand. They would rather condone and not cover. We must cover, but not condone. We must cover people's nakedness. We must cover people's backs, but we must never condone in their sin and their iniquity. That is what love is all about. The word to bear all means to roof over, to cover with silence. To cover with silence. To suffer and endure patiently. That is what it means to bear or to cover. Joseph, in conclusion, married Mary. After a few months, Joseph realized that Mary was pregnant. Yet they had not consummated their marriage. So Joseph knew that he wasn't the one who was the rightful husband to, I mean, rightful father to the child. And the Bible said, because he feared God, he sought quietly to divorce Mary. Because he feared God, he sought quietly to divorce Mary and not to bring her to a public shame or public ridicule. What it meant was that even though it was so painful for Joseph, Joseph decided he would cover his wife so that he would, she would not be subjected to public ridicule and public persecution. May the love of God overwhelm us. May the love of God flood our hearts. May the love of God bring us to that place of revelation and understanding 
that we will be filled with the love of God and walk in it. God bless you and be blessed. And I bring you the last message on the love test part four. And I believe God has blessed us and will complete our blessings in Jesus' name. Amen.